Hello my friends and welcome back to another Revolution Home Group. This is going to be week number three, which might seem weird because the first week we were kind of off, but this is week three in our The Revolution Growing Faith series that we've been talking about. But so glad you guys are back. My name is Brad and you are fill in the blank. Say your name out loud if you want. Let people hear it. Uh, meet some people tonight, man. I don't know if you know everybody who's here. I don't know if it's your first time. I don't know if, if it's you, you've been here every week since we started, but regardless, so glad you're here. Now, tonight we are going to do some worship. We're going to talk about a particular set of verses and in the realm of faith. We're going to dig into that a little bit more tonight. So it's going to be a really good night. I hope you're excited. I hope you're ready to dig in together and to really have some good discussion around this topic. But before we do any of that, we're going to spend some time thanking God for who he is, worshiping him, loving God. Now, here's the thing about that. At home, at the home groups where you're at, sometimes it's hard to do that. Whether you're at a home group at an actual home or you're at one of the groups that's at the church or wherever you find yourself, it can be difficult. It can be a challenge. When you're in a big service in a big room, a lot of times it's easy to hide your voice. It's easy to focus on God because there's so much other things going on. You don't seem like you're going to be noticed very much. And when you're in a smaller room, smaller group, that's not the case. So here's my encouragement to you. Close your eyes and let yourself just connect with God. If that means just listening to the lyrics of the songs, if that means you're you're spending some time praying, if that means that you are um, actually standing up, lifting your hands and singing out loud, you know what? It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks because this moment is meant for you and God and everybody collectively connecting with God but it's about you loving God and worshiping Him. So however you feel comfortable doing that, however you want to do that in the group you find yourself in tonight, let's worship Him together, and then we're going to jump in and talk about our faith after that. So let's worship. I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony, oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. So come together, sons and daughters, we're born with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God. We'll finish what he started. Yes, he will. Our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace be from my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. If I'm not dead, you're not done. 
Greater things are still to come If I'm not dead, you're not dying Greater things are still to come oh, we believe If I'm not dead, you're not dying Greater things are still to come testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony yeah. this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, oh, oh. some good stuff. Awesome worship. Thank you guys for using that time to connect with God. Now, we are going to continue to connect with God, but we're going to do it through opening up the scripture together. We're going to look at Luke chapter 17 and look at this story that Jesus tells about faith. So, that's bookmark that, okay? Luke 17, we're going to come back to that verses 5 through 10. But before we get to that, I wanted to talk a little bit about faith and use an analogy um, that I think is going to help us make sense of the story that we're going to read in Luke. So I've heard this story a lot. I've heard this analogy a lot growing up in church. Different uh, pastors have used this before, and I'm going to use it too. So I don't claim any original thought here. This is not my idea. This is someone else's, but I, it really helps me. So hopefully it helps you. Now, I'm sitting in a chair right now. If you're like, hey, how is, how is he in, in the screen right now? I'm not just, you know, standing. I'm sitting in a chair. It's, it's, it's what I'm in right now. It's holding me up. And, um, and so we're going to do just a little test, a little experiment with me and the chair and how it relates to faith. Okay? So I'm going to get up, and then I'm going to come sit back down in this chair, and then we're going to talk about that for a little while, which is like, dude, what are, what are you talking about, man? Hopefully it makes sense. Bear with me. I'm going to get up, I'm going to talk a little bit off screen, come sit down on the chair. Hopefully this all makes sense. Okay, you with me? You ready? Yes? Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm out of the chair. Chair is here. See the chair? Hope you see the chair. Now I'm going to sit in the chair. Okay. Ooh, it, it works. The chair works. Now, here's what I mean. I sat in something to hold me up so that I could be talking to you right now. It took faith for that to happen. I had to believe that this chair could support my weight. I had to believe that this chair was going to support me and hold me up. So then the question becomes, well, Brad, why did you have faith in that chair? Well, me and this chair have history. It's held me up many times. I've sat in it many times. I know it will hold me up. So my faith in this chair is strong. My faith is strong with this chair. But in the beginning, when I first sat in this chair, my faith wasn't as strong because I wasn't 100% sure it was going to hold me up. But then it's still a question of, do you have faith in the chair to hold you up? Because if I don't have faith in the chair, am I going to sit in it? The short answer is no. I'm not going to sit in the chair if I know it's going to fall, it's going to break, it's not going to hold me. I'm not going to sit in it. But I did have faith in it, and I sat, and it held me up. So my faith grew. Now this simple, simple analogy, I think is going to help us as we make sense of this story that we find in Luke chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. So verses are going to pop up on the screen. Check these out and read them with me, okay? Okay. This is the apostles, and they're talking to Jesus, and they say, um, Lord, 
increase our faith. In verse 6, he replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. He will say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat. Won't he rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Now, the apostles ask a simple question. Increase our faith. How can this happen? Right? Jesus goes on to kind of remind them what faith can do, how powerful it is, how you can have just faith this big, size of a mustard seed, right? And you could tell a tree to get to uproot itself and plant itself into the sea, and it'll happen. So basic idea is even with just a little bit of faith, the impossible can happen when your faith is in God. But then he tells this story about a servant. And it's like, well, how does this relate to faith? Well, if you boil that story down, he's comparing the servant to the apostles and the person with the servant to himself. So in that case, that would mean we as his disciples are meant to do what he's commanded of us. And in doing that, we're not even worthy to be able to do it, but he allows us to do it anyway. But as we do it and we see the things that he's commanded us to do happen, like we actually do those things and we see how they play out, our faith will grow. And you're like, well, how does this apply to faith? Well, he says this story after being asked, how do you increase your faith? So the simple lesson here is do what Jesus has commanded and your faith in Jesus will grow because of his faithfulness to you. And it's like, what do you mean his faithfulness to you? Well, when you actually do the things he tells you to do and he commands you to do, you're going to wind up feeling, receiving, experiencing the promises that come as a result of that. You're going to see the fruit of that. When you do what God calls you to do, when you forgive, when you love, when you serve, when you have grace on other people, when you do these things, you're going to experience what happens as a result of that. And as you do, your faith in God, in Jesus, will begin to grow the more and more you experience you doing what he's called you to do. So hopefully that helps make sense of the chair analogy. The more and more I've sat in this chair, the more and more my faith grows in the chair. I know it's going to hold me up because I've tested it multiple times. It keeps holding me up. The more and more you do what God's called you to do, the more and more you do what Jesus has asked of you, and showed you how to live. The more you do that, the more your faith in him is going to grow, and you're going to realize how faithful he is to you. And so what's amazing about faith is our faith grows because of how faithful God is. So it's not dependent on you. It doesn't hinge on you. It, It actually comes from God. And the only part we have to do is actually be obedient and do the things he's called us to. When we do, we'll find out and discover that he is faithful, he can be trusted, he can be hoped in, he can be believed in. And so how can we know what these things are that God commands, that Jesus asks of us, the things that he lived out and showed us how to do? How can we do those things? Well, the main way that we discover that stuff is by opening up the word of God, the scripture, the Bible. And we actually read it. We read his words. He tells us what those things are. He shows us through the life of Jesus how we are meant to live and how we can experience him in life. And so we read these things that Jesus taught and we look at them and we study them and we take them in and they they begin to take root in our heart. They begin to take root in our mind and they change the way we think about things. They change the way we act and treat other people. And because of those things, when we actually do them, our faith grows. So challenge tonight, a couple of them, right, is do what Jesus has asked of you. If you're feeling like, man, you're lacking faith, you need some more faith, actually do the things God's called you to do. 
And in his faithfulness, you'll see your own faith begin to grow. And then to actually do what those things are, the other challenge would be to start to open up our Bibles, open up our scripture that God's given us to know him better, to hear his voice, to know what he's saying, to see where he's calling us to. So let's do that together. Let's do that individually as a group. Let's open up what God has to say and let's start to do the things he actually says. Let's not just read about them and study them and and learn. Let's take what we're learning and actually use it and do it. So I hope that helps you. I know it helps me encouraging us as we're seeing our faith continue to grow, uh, as we ask God to continue to grow our faith and to trust him more and more. Uh, so I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm going to pray for me, pray for all of us that our faith will continue to grow as we do what he's called us to. And we continue to see our faith grow as we experience his faithfulness. So I'm going to pray for you. And then you're going to talk about it with your leader and with your friends in your group. So let's pray together. God, thank you so much for how much we can trust you and believe in you because your, your promises are always good. You are always faithful. And that when we do the things you've called us to, we actually will have more faith because we'll see the fruit of that and we'll be able to experience you through that. And so God, help us to actually open up the word, open up the scripture and read those things that you tell us. Not because uh, of any kind of obligation or guilt, God, but because we want to know you. We want to hear your voice And in that, our faith will grow because we get to now take what you've told us and we get to apply it, we get to use it, we get to do it. So help us to be those people, people that don't only listen, but listen and then do what you called us to do. So God, we are praying for more and more faith, but we are praying for faith that's in action, that is us doing the things you called us to. So I pray that we would be a church and a a people, a middle school group, and an individual that would do that. We thank you for it, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.